Hi, everybody. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tor channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for spending this time with us. We are in the very last chapter of Matthew. I think we should get a drum roll for that, everyone. Thank you. And uh, here we are. And so one thing I wanted to, let's, let's start with the day of the week. And it is the, it is the eighth month on our creator's calendar. It is the second day of the week. It is the fifth day on his calendar. It is uh, the 31st on the Gregorian satanic calendar. And um, it is probably one of the most unholy days of the entire world and there's a lot of people that will be end up dead a lot of souls are being sent to the shamayim today um from the satanists and the demons that do this crazy crazy stuff and um again if you've never listened to this channel and for some reason you decide that you would like to dress your child up in some sort of uh demonic pagan gear whether it be some harmless cartoon or some other thing you are participating in what the world participates in and you are absolutely no different from the world, you are the world, and so if that is if that is where your goals and your aspirations are to be part of the world, if you're dressing your kid up in a satanic Hall Halloween outfit, you are that. You you've succ you've succumbed, you've succeeded in becoming a full on Babylonian. So um, the people of Yahoo do not do this. Um, before we go over to this, I want to go bring up yes something real quick from yesterday. Um, this is from Matthew 27, and um, I, I want to go over this. Matthew 27 and verse 34. They gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he could not drink. Now, we didn't know of, we didn't know what this was. We just thought these guys were beyond monsters, which they, they probably are. We didn't know exactly what this was. We're just... Um, uh, we didn't know. So we had Brother Glenn, who listened to our... our lesson yesterday and he helped us out and he goes vinegar or soured wine is cheap wine that has gone bad it appears from the other accounts that it was mixed with gall and myrrh the soured wine would bring the chemicals in these ingredients out and most believe that it was a primitive painkiller the romans likely used it to prolong deaths on the cross this explains why matthew and mark mentioned that upon tasting it yahushua refused to drink it he experienced the pain of the cross in full without any painkillers so whatever that was, I don't think it was the gall that we knew of, as in like animal gall or in like mm -hmm. the bile stuff. Um, it was something different. So um, does that, everyone, yeah, does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Yeah. So, Fair so, Caesar, even more, you'll just name, it, don't give him any of that. Let him. Yeah, just let him see what's what's going to happen there. So we are on the very last chapter of this. And for those of you who have been with us through this series... Um, this will be the last time that you guys see out of the Sefer for the morning readings here. Um, I will use the Sefer for other stuff. Um, they, it is somewhat useful, but it is very bad translations. And so this is it, the final chapter out of this. We will begin Mark tomorrow in the Hallelujah Scriptures. And we will uh, see what that looks like and see what, how that reads. But for now, here we are in this. Is everyone ready? Yep. yep. How you guys doing? Everyone ready? Good. Yep. Yeah. No issues? Nope. No. Nothing? Your hair is looking a little long, guys? Yep. Look like long-haired, creepy people. <laughs> it's not that long. It's not that long, but it's longer than normal. You guys normally have a pretty short do. Remember the time we got hair really long, and I decided we were going to decide how it was when you guys encounter a fight with long hair? and we yeah. have, Remember that? Mm -hmm. So we, we have this thing out there. We've we have um, we've been doing MMA since the kid. I, I was doing MMA back when I was in my 20s and stuff. The kids... Um, the kids have been in fight gear since they were young. I have pictures of them just as, like, I don't know, two years old in boxing gloves and, and helmets. They've always been into it. We've always been fighting. They are, um, they are tactically well, um, as in if somebody wants to encounter the boys or encounter one of us, um, hand to hand, it's going to be a um, difficult journey for that person. And um, anyway, we went out there one time because we were, we were uh, I, I was to explain to the boys that if you have long hair in a fight, it's a complete disadvantage. And they didn't really realize this. And so we went out there. We went, we have mats and we have, we have, um, we actually have bed, old bed uh, mattresses that are screwed to the wall. So we have our own gym outside on our porch. And so um, we went out there and uh, I don't remember how exactly it went down, but I do remember I got a hold of your guys' hair and there's not much you could do about it. I remember somebody got a hold of my hair you as like well. You like a three second rule. You only hold their hair for like three seconds. Yeah, you couldn't hold their hair very long, but it is a complete disadvantage for men to have long hair, especially in any kind of combat. Uh, 
you are going to get drilled. Um, I would say my beard, if I'm going to into combat, I'm going to have to put it into a, some sort of a beard bun. <laughs> if there's such a thing. But yeah, that's uh, life at the Boss Clan. So thank you guys very, very much. Again, um, you guys are all our family out there. We would not be happy if we did not have you guys out there because we have found a tremendous amount of family out there. And we love you all. So let's continue on. Matthew 28, last and final. But late in the day of the Shabbat, as it began to grow light to that one Shabbat to come, came Miriam of Migdal and the other Miriam and beheld the sepulcher. Okay, what does your guys say? Read it out of the Holy Scriptures, please. Now after the Shabbat, toward the dawn on one of the uh, the Shabbats, the Miriam from Magdala and the other Miriam came to see the tomb. Okay, so this is a he, this is that is the correct translation. Both of the, actually for once, Doctor Stephen Pigeon got this right, and so did the How You Scriptures. Um, the king on the left did not get this right. They did. I guess it is technically right. It is the first day of the week, but it was a high Shabbat. And what we need to understand is Messiah Yahushua came as came basically the night that they 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 killed him the exact same day in the same day frame that the um, lamb was killed. And so the day afterwards on this is a high Shabbat. And so that is one thing to everyone needs to understand that Messiah rose on a high Shabbat. And so all of these feast days, all of these festivals, all of this stuff, blowing of trumpets, um, you know, that Yom Shirar, these are all very meaningful things, which is why we really, really, really need to strive very, very hard to get on the right calendar. And um, it's still something that plagues all of us here in this house. Are we on the right calendar? We hope we are. And, you know, we are late in the game. We're 6,000 years uh, late to when Yah walked with his people. And so um, here we are. So let's go. Verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of Yahuwah descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat up on it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for him and for fear of him, the garters did shake and became as dead men. Okay, um, can you imagine that situation right there? Um, you, I don't know if you guys, you guys have never been uh, like, uh, I don't know, what do they say? Uh, scared to the point of death, right? But when humans are like that, there's, there's, there's one thing, they, they, it's called flight or f fight or flight. And I guess the other option is to remain still and not just like, maybe this thing won't see me. Maybe if I don't move, maybe if I don't say a word, I'll just sit here and it will bypass me. Nothing will happen, right? This is what it sounded like these guys were sitting there, right? Um, the fear of the garters did shake and became as dead men. And that's, you know, when you, when you look as dead men, they just, they're going to sit there. They're not going to say a word because that, you know, if you say something, whatever it is, because it could kill you. You don't, you don't know what it is. They were scared to death. Five. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, women, fear ye not, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Yahushua, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where Adonai lay, and go quickly and tell his town Midian that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his Talmudian, his Talmudian word. Now, this is, I wonder what angel this was. Any, any guesses? Is this one think, of the big ones? I would think Gabriel. I think one of the good ones, the bigger ones? I think so. I, I think it'd be Gabriel. You know, he was at, uh, he told uh, Joseph uh, during Messiah's birth and stuff, like, take care of Yehoshua, and then he, like, uh, so he's probably here as well. I wonder what differentiates the, the, the bigger angels, like Raphael and Ur Uriel and those kind of things, away from... Just the regular messengers, right? I, I, what, I think, I think they, it's like commandership. I think it's a uh, like they had, or, or like rose up to the ranks or something, or proved their most loyal or something. So Yah gave them the most power over I, I think all the angels. It's basically maybe the ability to think better instead of just being like like ants. They uh, have more of a like a, a ability to think. It could be. I think I think Cade is right to the sense that Yah is a man of war. And I mean, when they marched out of Ramses and Mitzrayim, they marched out in fifties and hundreds, fifty by fifty. Um, and so I think that he would probably have commanders and, and people of that thing. I would guess, but those are all very good thoughts. Thank you, gents. Okay. Uh, nine. And as they went to tell his Talmudian, behold, Yahushua met them, saying, "All hail!" And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. 
Okay. Does your guys say worshipped him? My says bowed down to him. Bowed down to him. This is, again, this is a tripping point for the Christians where they will they will go, nobody is going to worship the son of the most high if it is not the most high. And we've seen many, many accounts where people will worship humans, right? They're, they're, they're getting on their knees. They do obeisance, as they say. And Joshua is, fell down before the angels. Yeah. And so there we go. And so, yeah, the, you're not worshiping them as Elohim, I mean, but you're giving them respect as they should. I right. mean, they're a stronger entity. Right. If some dude comes back from the dead, you might bat out before him. Yeah. What's going on here? You know, what, what's what's going on? Okay. Um, Ten. Then said Yahushua unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that ye go into Galil, and there shall ye they see me. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. So, who, who is it? What did you guys say? Watch some of the guards. Guards, okay, guards. yeah. So, um, yeah, those guards were probably in a lot of trouble. The guards that were out there that were definitely afraid were probably ended up getting killed. Would be my guess. Um, no. Doesn't say that they were. No, I, I don't. I mean, I'm guessing. I said I guess. I mean, because this was a big thing, right? This was this was something these guards that I mean, they they really you know they couldn't say what they saw, right? But they said that they would make them safe. That was prior to that, right? Prior before he disappeared is what no, they said. It says it in here. Does it? Yeah. This chapter? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'm off. Here we go. Um, and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye his Talmudian came by night and stole him away while we slept. Okay, all right. Thanks, Nicole. I guess you've read this chapter, and so did I, but I, I don't know why. what's wrong with me. Okay, 14. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among Yahudim until this day. Then the eleven Talmudian went away into Galil, into a mountain where Yahushua had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Yahushua came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What does he mean with when he says this right here? It's obvious he doesn't have the power, but it's been given to him. He, what do you mean? It's obvious he didn't have the power. Like, he, he says he's not the one who distributes the power. He says it's been given to me. Yeah, and this is, well, and, and yeah, absolutely. But this is something, you know, he, he he has a little bit more power, right? He has, now he has fulfilled his father's wishes. He has now, literally all power is given unto him, right? Now he is our Messiah because he walked that walk. Prior to this, he was our Messiah, but he had not died as our Messiah, right? And so now he is all powers given unto to me in heaven and in earth. Okay, 19. Go ye therefore... And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Ruach HaKadosh. Okay, um, this is how the Trinitarians will, will, I mean, this is this is part of the Trinitarian belief right here, right? The Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKadosh. That is, that is a Trinitarian verse right here. When the Christians will baptize you, and this is how they do it. I've lived in the Christian church 25 years of my life, maybe more. And um, once you once you are saved, once you raise your hand as that kid in, or anyone in church, you can raise your hand. You can get on your knees in front of the, have what they call an altar call. After that, they will schedule you a baptism and you will do that in front of the whole church. It's usually after church or a little bit time after, you know, they, they don't do it usually during church. They do it at a special kind of a ceremony kind of thing. You will get in a ginormous bathtub with your preacher He'll be in some little funky looking preacher clothes and he will, everybody's there and they would put your hand, you put, you plug your nose, they put their hand on it and they go down and they go, we baptize you in the name of the father, the son and the, and you're down in the water and the Holy spirit. And then they pull you up and everybody cheers and everybody's down and you have now supposedly secured your soul into the, the never once saved, always saved. You'll never get out, you know, that, that kind of thing. So what is he saying here? Therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Ruha HaKadosh. What does he mean by this? He's saying teach them these things. Teach them with the power of the Ruha HaKadosh. Teach them about the Son. Teach them about the Father. 
Yeah, yeah, teach them all, and then baptize him as well. And so this is baptism is a a huge part of this whole thing. We had John the Baptist. We had uh, you know, and who was John the Baptist? It was his cousin. And who was Elijah? It? Elijah. In real life, I mean, that was who we know. I know he was a cousin, second round, okay. but first round. Um, you know, and that's that's what he was doing, right? He was baptizing people, and everyone was like, "Why are you baptizing these people for this?" And um, what did he say about his baptism? That it was, well, it was from heaven. Yes, yeah, from heaven, and so. There we go. Okay, 20. Teaching them to guard all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Okay, that's a very amazing promise. Um, teaching them to guard all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Yeah, okay, so Nicole, how many commands do we end up with? This is it. In the, in the book of Matthew. Was it like 42? The, Hold on, I gotta go open it. Okay, so as we wrap this up, gentlemen, what are your final thoughts out of the book of Matthew Yahu? It's one of the best books in the Bible. This is an amazing book, isn't it? It's, it's a really good book. Um, I do prefer, I think, John or one of the other ones because it does give a little more detail about everything in the final, what happens. There's a lot more detail during his uh, crucifixion. Right. You like right? thoughts? Um, it's a good book. Uh, That's it? It's one of the best, probably. You have anything else? Uh, that's already been said. You're um, repeating it. I know, but that's my thoughts You're about it. Plagiarizing too. Cade. That's my thoughts about it too, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think there's about 40, but I gotta. But we're I not finished. Yeah, we're not done yet, but in the book of Matthew, so we had a, with the Torah, we have 174 commandments. And that is from that is the commandments that we have found that we can keep, and it's actually probably a little bit more. But we have like the dietary laws; those are all under one because it, it doesn't make sense to add them as like multiple commandments. Like don't eat the shrimp, don't eat the lobster. We're actually, eggs. end up with six thir- six hundred thirteen. I don't that. think we're gonna end up with six hundred thirteen. I think that's all Talmudic. I think those the Jews have taken over and and like have owned the commandment count yeah, and if it, if it was really truly the jews they would have way more than 613 because they have 25 other books the talmud right they, they have like like i think what like 2000 commands just for shabbat yeah there's the, the hundreds yeah hundreds of commands just for shabbat right and so um this is the burdens that our creator has said and messiah yahushua has said that these people have put on people is adding all this crazy stuff okay so 40 commands is what we have nicole I think somewhere around there. Roughly 40 commands. So in the book of Matthew, we have 40 other commands. And they're not other commands. They are just fine-tuned walking of the Torah. We have how to love our brother more, how to forgive our brother more, how we should pray, things of this nature. And um, they're very, very important. And uh, nothing in Messiah Yahushua's um, walk went against the Torah. In fact, it supported the Torah more than anything. And um, it's very, very sad. One day, I think we're going to see, you know, this is... Um, it's, it's sad that we read this and it's kind of sad, but if you had to live this, it would have been a, an atrocity. And if you had to be the person Messiah Yahushua was that li- lived that kind of a torture at the hands of the Romans, um, that's nothing you would want even on your, your worst enemy. You know, there's, there's nothing and let alone the, the king of the world. And so we have a huge debt of, of not just respect and honor that we need to pay to our Messiah, and to his dad, our father, but it's something we need, you know, he's given us all of this. Why can't we give him our obedience? Why are we so man-made, human-bound that we think that we're so all gods, lowercase g, that we don't need our creator, that we don't need the Torah, that we don't need anything in our life, that we we are just so good, but yet when we look at it, People die every single day. Every single day in the hospital, you can When you get a disease, you can't. You can't fix yourself. Maccabees, the one of the king Antiochus, whatever the Antiochus guy, right? He was the most one of the most evil, vile um, Roman guys out there. In Greece, I can't remember where he was from, but he was flaying people, killing them all, and he was at the top of the world. And at the end of the day, Yah leveled him, and he, even the people that were around him, his flesh started stinking so badly. Nobody could be around him. In fact, his flesh starts singing so badly he couldn't be around himself. Finally, at the end, when he's just about to die, he he decides that, yeah, what have I done? Why am I so pompous? Why am I so pious? Why am I so proud? And all of it. And he died in agony. He died in, in pretty much grossness. And Yah will bring them down. Yah will bring everyone down. He gives us 120 years to find the way. And for those who are seeking the way, thank you guys very, very much for seeking that way. Our kingdom is going to be awesome. It's going to be full of awesomeness. It's going to be full of 
righteousness and we're going to get rid of Hasatan. We're going to get rid of the wicked one that he's going to get and all these demons, all these things that are plaguing us, the, the demons of depression, the demons of sadness, the demons of all of this stuff that agonizes day after day that take try to take hold of ourselves and our kids. They'll be gone. And so all of a sudden, all of the darkness from around us will be gone. We'll walk with the king. We will speak with the king. We will walk in, in the Elohim's, our Elohim most high's glory, which is his son. All right, guys. I think that's it. Anyone else have anything else? Uh, nope. That's it. Have a great day. Read your Bibles, and we will see you in the next one. Okay. We will see you guys for Marcus tomorrow. Right. Shalom. Shalom.